Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is Introduction to Audit Command Language. This is the third lesson in a series of eight lesson sets on the topic of Introduction to ACL. So let's get started. So on this third lesson, we'll be covering defining fields. So defining fields is really important because oftentimes uh, you want to create new data using the existing data or using combining different data sets uh, to in order to create new information to get to the objective that you want to achieve. But enough about me rambling, let's just get started. So I'm going to, we're going to start off where we left off in the previous lesson. So if you, if you're not where I am right now, pause the video, go back to lessons one and two, make sure that you're all on the same page so that we can all keep up with each other. So defining fields, ultra important again because you can create new data so what i'm going to show you first is uh so here we've had the imported data so what i'm going to show you first is actually how to actually comment so when you type the word comment or in fact if you type the word com it actually does the same thing but when you type the word comment it allows you to put a comment so that uh, you can uh, annotate your script without acl reading that particular one so i can say importing source documents importing source documents so it's just a quick way for someone else to pick up and, and read the document. And normally, I'd be a little bit more detailed in here, but we're in the middle of the video, so let's just get started. So we're gonna go. We're gonna define define a field. So the first best practice is first to what I, what I call delete the field. So we're gonna go delete field, and then we're gonna we need first need to figure out what we're actually wanna wanna do. So here, maybe we wanna figure out what percentage of the bonus what's the percentage of the bonus relative to the salary so that's pretty pretty straightforward like that's something you might want to know you might want to know your bonus percentages and see if there's any outliers any strange amounts any excessively large amounts so we're going to call this um bonus bonus underscore percent so when you are a percentage when you define your field you can't have any spaces in your field name or else ACL will get confused. So here we're gonna go delete field, uh, bonus underscore uh, bonus underscore percentage. And some of you are gonna ask, like, do I really have to do that? The answer is technically no in most scenarios, but it's just best practice because you wanna eliminate any previous definitions uh, before you start your new definition. So we're gonna go define field, and we're gonna put the same thing, bonus percentage, and then we're gonna use this function called computed. And essentially, what we're going to do is simply pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take salary. We're going to take bonus underscore two thousand two. So you can double click the title, or you can type it yourself. Divided by salary. So pretty straightforward. But before we do that, we actually have to open up the table. So we're going to go open underscore employee may. So hopefully everyone has something like that. And then we're gonna click run. And then what now you see here is now that we have a bonus percentage. You might say, okay, uh, I actually want it to be to four decimal places. So what you actually have to do is that ACL is always gonna default to what the lowest number of decimal places are existing within your function. So in this case, the lowest number is two because they're both two. So what we actually have to do is convert both of them to four uh, character, uh, four decimal places. So how do we do that? So there's a couple ways we can do it. We can multiply both sides by one times zero, 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 or let's just try that out. So we just multiply both numbers by one with four decimal places, and then you do that way. Or I'm gonna show you a couple ways of, do I'm gonna show you one other way of doing it, uh, which is actually probably my more most common way is actually you use this thing called DEC and then it's gonna ask you for the number of decimal places that you want to view so it's basically said uh, round to a certain number of decimal places but before even if you don't know that how do you actually go find that out so you see that function and then you're like oh I, I don't really have access to YouTube I can't access King's video uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go content and this is something when I was learning ACL, I was addicted to this help guide, and I was just looking up random functions, things that I could try out, uh, just so that I could actually go learn. So we're gonna go search, 
go and we're going to use this DEC function. It's really helpful. So here's the syntax, which is basically the function bracket a number, comma the number of decimal places. And then here it gives you some more descriptions, tells you what the output is, which is really important because that can feed into other variables, uh, and then gives you examples here. So perfect. And then uh, maybe we want to multiply the number afterwards by uh, 100 with two decimal places. There you go. So now we have a percentage in, uh, in a whole number. So what we can then do now is right click the title or yeah, right click the title and go sort descending. Nope, numeric overflow. And you know the, the reason why is, uh, is because one of the lines is actually zero and actually is the end of the file. But so there are a couple ways we could deal with this. One, we could uh, extract it and create a new file, but we haven't quite learned that yet. So we're going to figure out a way how to actually resolve this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put it to the second line, put this two lines below, and what we're going to use is what we call an if function. So if is very common in Excel and is actually a very similar methodology. But the way that it works here is that first you define what your output is. In this case, this is my output. And then you define the condition that meets that output. So we're going to say if bonus underscore 2002 does not equal zero. As long as bonus, uh, yeah, as long as, actually, I need to put salary. Because salary is the, the numerator. Salary does not equal zero. Make it this formula. Otherwise, make it uh, a number with four decimal places. Zero of four decimal places. And the reason why is if I make it to one decimal place, then what you'll see here is it'll force everything to be one decimal place. But if I add two decimal places here, and this gets a lot of people, so it's super important. So now we should be able to sort descending. And then what you'll see here is now there's, uh, this may not even be the highest bonus amount. So it actually wasn't even the highest bonus amount, but uh, this one actually sticks out like a th sore thumb because it's a very high percentage. So that's something you might actually want to investigate or know, know something further about. So that's good. That's interesting. Uh, say, for example, I don't really like that uh, the card number here is has the full numbers. And maybe I actually want to create a field where, where I actually I'll, I'll only have the first four numbers as opposed to having the entire number. And I'm going to use that in my explorer. So what, what can you do about that? So what we're going to do here is we're going to go, we're going to go delete field and we're going to go, we're going to call it card hash just so that it's like get encrypted. Uh, and then we're going to go, okay. And then we're going to go defeat the uh, defined field card hash computed. And then we're going to use this function called substring. So before we actually get to it, let's look up what substring does so substring all right yeah you can do it that way other way substring is super useful and it's very similar to the function mid it's actually the exact same as the function mid in excel so here it asks you the the syntax is substring give me a string tell me where you start and what's the length so we look at the example here they have this string a b c d e f Start at two, give me three. So start at two and then go for three. There you go, and that's the output. So in this case, we're actually going to go, we're going to take card num, and then we're going to go one to four. Start at one, go for four. And then here, you have now you have the card hash. So good, uh, really interesting. Uh, really uh, great field to, to use. So now what we're going to do is right now the higher date, if we look, uh, if I look here, the higher date is a date field. But what happens if I want to pull out the, the month in each of the dates? So there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you can do the month function, but I'm just going to show you a creative way of doing it. So you might think like define field month, um, and I go, okay, and I go, uh, uh, define field, month, computed, 
I might you might say like, whoa, why can't why can't we just use substring, and then just go to the date here, and go go to higher date, and just go one comma two. That is not gonna work, and the reason why is that substring requires a string. So how do we actually convert that? So we're gonna simply use this function called date. And then what date does is basically converts the day to a character. And in this case, the, the month is always uh, two characters. But in some instances, uh, you can imagine that this could be 9, 26, uh, 2002 as opposed to 09. So what we're actually going to do, instead of using substring, we're going to use this function. So ha start with something like this. And we're going to go use this function called split. And then what we're going to need to do for split is first we define the field that we're looking at, the text that we're looking at. And then we go comma, what's, what's actually our delimiter? How do we actually split the data? In this case, I want to split it by, I shouldn't hover over it, split it by uh, the slash. And then what section of the split do you want? So if I look here, I look back in the data, this data is split to this section 1, which is the 12th, section 2, which is the 28th, then section three, which is the 1997. So here I want section one. There you go. So now I have, uh, now I have the month. And then you can easily quickly modify it to get the year, the date, um, etc. So, okay, enough of enough of uh, those ones. Let's actually go to um, unacceptable codes. And maybe, for example, we want to figure out which of these have um, have commas in them. We just want to know just so that in our data we can account for that, uh, et cetera. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go open unacceptable uh, codes. And we're going to go here is we're going to go define field. And we're going to go comma. We're going to go code comma count and we're going to go OK and we're going to delete field comma count computed and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to use this function called occurs what occurs does is basically counts the number of instances that you're looking for so in this case we're going to go occurs uh, and we're going to pick the field so we're going to call description double click copy paste and then it's gonna we're gonna put in quotation what we're actually looking for which is commas and we go bracket and there you go so now if we run this what you'll see here is that there's one comma here in this field and there's actually is one comma perfect say for example okay there's some examples here where there's quite a few commas and I don't want my description to be so long. So I want um, I want everything, I, I want to remove all the commas. There's just too many commas, just really confusing. So how can I fix that? So there's a couple different functions that you can use. And the one that I recommend is that if you want to get rid of one thing, uh, then I recommend using the function called exclude. So you, you might probably be asking, getting all excited and saying, uh, what does exclude do? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go description, uh, modified and we're gonna go oh, delete it and then we're gonna go define field description modified and we're gonna compute it and we're gonna use this function called exclude description which is the field that we're looking at and we're gonna say they're gonna ask us what do you want to exclude I want to exclude all the commas perfect okay that looks e that looks better that looks better like without the commas hypothetically but what would make it look even better is ev everything was the same case. Like there's just all these, sometimes they're capitals, sometimes they're not. Uh, it's just really confusing. So how can we fix that? So what we can do here is we can actually use this function called upper and basically put it around the entire text. So upper, as you suspect, uh, basically puts everything in uppercase. And if we right click the column heading, Hook resize all columns, then it'll uh, update your view. Say, for example, I don't really, uh, um, 
I, I just want to include letters. Like, I don't want any numbers. I don't want any of these at, uh, and signs. I just want letters. So if there's an unknown number of variables that you can or cannot include, uh, what I recommend then you doing is basically using this function called include and then go comma or let's let's change it up a bit because uh, writing all the letters uh, is, a, is a good example. But say, for example, you just want to know if any of these words have the words uh, A, B, C, D, E because uh, you just want to pick a random set of variables uh, so to see if there's a, what has the longest length. So you go A, B, C, D, E. So we're just going to leave it there. So what's going to happen? So what you'll see here is now it's only left A, B, C, E. And you'll see that this one right here has a lot of A, B, C, D, E. That's it's quite the uh, largest. But how do you know which one's actually the longest? So that's a, that's a good question, or which one has the longest length? So what we're going to do here is we're going to go uh, delete field, uh, description, length, good OK. And we're going to go define field, description, underscore length, computed. And we're just going to use this function called length. And we're going to use description modified. Pretty simple, right? You just use this function. It count, counts the number of uh, characters that are in there. So let's take a look. Oh, it's given us all the same value. I wonder why that's the case. The reason why, so you can go to any of these cells, is, uh, is uh, because there's all these white spaces. So how do we actually get rid of all these extra spaces at the beginning and end? So this is a great question. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this function called all trim and all trim will basically remove all the spaces at the beginning or end. So when we go to resize, voila, now you have the actual length of the, of the string. So what I've showed you today, these are probably the most common ones that I use. So we use the if statements. So if statements really great, you can not only do it on dollar value, you could use it on if it's equal to a certain word. Uh, I showed you substring. Substring is probably the most common one that I use. Uh, I showed you date. I showed you split. I showed you occurs. I showed you include, upper, include, or exclude, upper, include, all trim, and length. There's obviously a number of other different functions uh, that that are, are available and that can be used. I use... Uh, for example, last uh, quite a bit. I use sometimes use like the day of the week uh, function, but these ones are probably, to be honest, the the main ones that I do use, and I just use them in different combinations in order to achieve your objective. So what you soon learn is that using ACL or using any program is not so much about learning the upper tier fancy functions like these loops or do whiles or uh, all these different functions. It's really about using the basics in the appropriate order in order to solve great problems. So I look forward to speaking to you in the next lesson. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you and I look forward to speaking next time.